Hey guys, Josh here, and this is my review of Pixel Cross Story of Seasons, releasing for the Nintendo Switch and Steam on February 27th, 2024. This game is developed by Score Studios, who's behind the Pixel Cross series. It is published by Rainy Frog, and it is first and foremost a game of Nonogram puzzles, sometimes also known as Picross. However, it does feature characters, music, and other elements from the Story of Seasons franchise by Marvelous. I was provided with a review key for the game, so I had the chance to play it quite a bit in the past week. I'll tell you what I liked and disliked about it, and by the end of the video, you should have a good idea of whether or not this game is for you. First, let's go over what a nonogram puzzle is. You have to fill the correct squares in a grid in order to complete a picture. For each row and column, you have some numbers to help you figure it out. So for example, if you see the numbers 3 and 1, it means that you'll have to do a sequence of three squares, then another one of one square in that same line, with each sequence being separated by at least one space. You press A to fill in a square, press B to place an X, which helps you keep track of where not to fill in the squares, and press X to undo if you ever make a mistake. The game shows you a short tutorial at the beginning, and it takes place as Pete and Claire, the two protagonists from Friends of Mineral Town, are watching the Learning Channel on TV, which I found to be a fun reference to the series. If it's your first time, these nonogram puzzles might seem a bit confusing, but the game does a good job at explaining how to play, and trust me, as you start doing it yourself, you will figure it out pretty quickly. The game also eases you through them, starting with small 5x5 grids, and gradually increasing the size to 25x20 for the biggest ones. If you're familiar with other puzzle games, like Sudoku for example, this is a bit different, but it is the same genre of logic puzzles and they have a similar vibe to them. If you're not sure whether you'll like it or not, I would recommend you search for some nonogram puzzles on your browser or on your phone, as there are plenty of free ones to try and the rules are the same. One thing I really love about Pixel Cross Story of Seasons specifically is that there are tons of options to customize your experience based on your skills or the difficulty you're looking for. For example, you can enable a clue roulette which will fill in one random row and column at the beginning of a puzzle, giving you a bit of a head start. You can also have the game autofill X's when you complete a line. You can enable an autocorrector that will prevent you from making mistakes. There's also a tool that checks for mistakes if you did any. And you can also enable hints that will show you which lines you can deduce moves from to give you an idea of what to do next. There's honestly a lot of options to personalize your experience, on top of accessibility features such as a dyslexia font and colorblind settings. If you do use help from the clue roulette, hints, autocorrector, or mistake checker, your high score will be marked by a tool, but the game doesn't really punish you for doing so and there's no wrong or right way to play. Just one tiny thing that annoyed me is that if you press L, which is the button that usually show you hints, you will get the watering can icon saying that you did use hints, even if you turned off the hints feature. This seems to be a very small oversight in the programming, and who knows, it might be fixed by the time the game comes out in a few days, but it doesn't break the gameplay in any way. Another thing is I wish you could maybe have different types of markers besides the squares and the X's. I often like to put down markers temporarily when I'm counting to help me visualize things better, but if I'm not careful, things can easily get mixed up. I feel like having the option to put down, let's say, circles that would have no impact on the grid would be really helpful. Overall though, the game is pretty well done, it works well, and offers a lot of options. So that's pretty much it for the nonogram part of the game. So where does the Story of Season stuff comes in? Well, all of the pictures you fill in are things you will recognize from the series, such as tools, crops, animals, characters, and more. You also get to see a farm in the background, and some of the pictures will add things to the farm once completed. For example, find the hoe and the characters will start tilling the soil, find a certain crop, and if it's the right season, it will start growing. Not all of the pictures will make a difference, and these things are all purely visual, but it is fun to keep an eye out and see how the farm evolves over time. The game also features an almanac where you can see pictures of characters and animals from the series once you've completed their associated puzzle. The Almanac covers Story of Seasons, 3DS, Trio of Towns, Friends of Mineral Town, Pioneers of Olive Town, and A Wonderful Life. So pretty much all of the Story of Seasons games after the rebrand from Harvest Moon, and excluding spin-offs like the Popolo Cross and Doraemon ones. 
For some reason, you start with most pages of the Story of Seasons section, and by that I mean the first game, and there are not a lot of puzzles from that entry. For the next games, however, most pages will be blank, and you will fill up the characters and animals as you complete their related puzzles. There is also a music player where you can listen to 29 different tracks, from Trail of Towns up to A Wonderful Life, so once again the first game is kind of left out for some reason. There is a pretty good selection, but unfortunately no way to select what music will play when you're in the menus or doing puzzles, those will be random. As soon as you leave the music player, the track you chose just stops abruptly, and it is a small thing, but I think it could have been fun to pick what plays in the background, and also maybe even unlock more tracks as you progress, as the series has so many nice tunes that would be fitting for a relaxing puzzle game like this one. Spending time in the Almanac and music player is when I started noticing some flaws with the presentation of the game. Pioneers with three E's, musical note with the I and C switched around, Johnny spelled J-O-H-H-N-Y, and a few other typos like that. The way that music tracks are labeled is also a bit inconsistent. For example, the spring, summer, and autumn themes from Trio of Towns have Trio of Towns in their name, but on the second line, the game it comes from says Friends of Mineral Town. I'm pretty sure there were some Trio of Towns tracks in Mineral Town, so maybe that's why, but then when you go to the Autumn in Oak Tree Town track, which is the version from A Wonderful Life, but originally from the first Story of Seasons, both lines, the one with the title and the one with the game, say A Wonderful Life, with no mention of Story of Seasons on the 3DS. Actually, tracks from A Wonderful Life just say Wonderful Life instead of A Wonderful Life, and the capitalization in the song titles is also inconsistent. You're gonna find me so annoying, but last thing about the presentation, you can see Powerberry icons for the volume settings, they're the ones from Friends of Mineral Town, which is nice, but they look like they were stretched horizontally to make them fit into squares. I'm sure all of these things a lot of people probably won't even care or notice, but I wish more time was put into the presentation, and if Marvelous you need to hire someone to check that kind of stuff, let me know. I don't want to be too harsh on that game because besides the localization teams, and hopefully some people from Marvelous to double check the branding and making sure names of characters don't have typos, it was developed mostly by one person, James K. It's also pretty cheap at $9.99 US dollars or $13.49 Canadian, but I wish they had paid a closer attention to these little details. Considering that it features over 354 puzzles, 270 of them being standalone pictures, and the other 84 are part of large colleges that represent five different festivals, plus the game also has achievements to keep track of, most of them just consisting of completing the puzzles, but this game will surely keep you busy for a while. I've honestly been having so much fun with it, I played mostly before going to bed for like 30 minutes a day or throughout the day when I needed short breaks and it's been very relaxing. For this reason, I'm really glad I picked up the Switch version over the Steam one, as I like to be able to play anytime, anywhere, but I do have to say I think the Steam version looks way better, at least when it comes to the farm background. On the Switch, a lot of the models have very pixelated edges, and some things do look a bit rough compared to screenshots that can be seen on the Steam page. The colors also look a lot more saturated, and I feel like the lighting is different on the Switch, I'll put a little comparison from the game on my Switch and what's on the Steam page, and it is a bit jarring for me. The main Night Story of Seasons games look the same on all platforms, and they look pretty good, and this one you think wouldn't be that demanding, yet there is a clear graphical difference between the two platforms. Either way, I'm still glad to be playing it on the Switch, but I'm sure there must be a way somehow to make it look closer to the PC version. Overall, I'm really enjoying Pixel Cross Story of Seasons, it's a great nonogram puzzle game with tons of features allowing you to customize your experience based on your preferences and how easy or difficult you would like it to be. I wish a bit more care was put into the presentation, but I think most of the flaws I pointed out in this review could be fixed with some updates. If you're interested in puzzle games and you are a Story of Seasons fan, you might as well play one from your favorite series. On the other hand, if you like Story of Seasons but you hate puzzles, I don't think this game will change that for you, because it's still just a puzzle game. So let me know what you think, will you be picking up Pixel Cross Story of Seasons? Also, are there any other Story of Seasons spin-offs or crossovers you'd like to see in the future? 
Let me know, leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And I'll see you all in the next video.